And I do believe that sinners will be converted. I believe we are all sinners. We've all fallen short of the glory of God. And this is a time to turn to God. He's full of mercy. He's full of compassion, full of grace. Now is the time to, to look toward him and cry out to him while there is day, while there is night. Because I'm telling you, once, once that sun gets dark and once the timekeepers are removed, that's going to be a scary time. And now is the day of salvation. Don't, don't wait until the last minute. You cry out to God while there is time and pray that his, he will not refuse one who is broken and crying out to him. Um, so joy and gladness relates to the purging of sin and rejoicing from the restored joy and gladness. Um, the letters of peace and truth as found in Esther also relate to salvation. And here's a part of Esther that I wanted to read. It's uh, Esther 9.30. And he sent the letters unto all the Jews to the 127 provinces of the king Azurus with words of peace and truth to confirm these days of Purim in their times or in their seasons. That's another word for seasons. The times appointed according to Mordecai the Jew and Esther the queen had enjoined them. And as they decreed for themselves and for their seed the matters of fastings and their cry. They were repentive, they fasted, they cried, and the letter, as the letters of peace and truth went out, this is what I was saying earlier, this is the time to cry out for salvation. Let's see. Um, Psalm 85, 8 is important to read too. There's also Zechariah 8. Look up Zechariah 8 because you have to read the whole chapter of, of Zechariah 8. I w this is Psalm 85, 8. I will hear what what God the Lord will speak, for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints, but let them not turn again to folly. Surely his salvation is nigh to them that fear him, that glory may dwell in our land. Mercy and truth are met together, righteousness and peace have kissed each other. Truth shall spring out of the earth, and righteousness shall look down from heaven. Yea, the Lord shall give that which is good, and our land shall yield its increase. Righteousness shall go before him and shall set us in the ways of his steps. Now, one one other thing that has happened uh, at the time of Purim when they had uh, this joy and gladness was there was something that they also had and it was called light. When you study that, that Hebrew word, um, it's ora, uh, O-R-A-H, and the, the, one of the root words of that is O-R. It means illumination. Um, God is the giver of light. Even in Genesis, it's used, this word is used, I'm sorry. Uh, as the illumination, not only let there be light, but also when God created the timekeepers, the sun and the moon and the stars, that word uh, is also used for the moon and the sun. So we have a picture here, and it just happens to be, when I read this, that March 20th, lines up with what has been termed by a scientist uh, the supermoon when in, in the past 18 years this is the brightest this moon has been the, the illumination of this moon uh, lines up with the feast of Purim the Jews had light they had light they had the hope of God but it would not surprise you one bit if God's creation is reflecting this light or showing this light. Um, there, the, the Bible says there will be signs in the sun and the moon and the stars, and I'm not wouldn't at all be surprised that this is part of that before he returns. Um, Isaiah 6, he talks a little bit about that. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen above thee. But for behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and gross darkness for the people. But the Lord shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee, and the Gentiles shall come to the light. Again, getting back to the Feast of Purim, this is a time where the, the letters of peace and truth, the gospel goes out, and it brings light and hope to people. And, and kings to brightness of thy rising. Excuse me for a sec. 
lift up thine eyes around thee and see that all that gather themselves together, they come to thee. Thy son shall come from far and thy daughter shall be nursed at thy side. Then shall thou see and flow together in thy, thine heart shall fear and be enlarged because the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. Man, this is a great time. <laughs> we, we are living in a really impressive time in history. Um, I want to talk about Genesis 1.16 where the word or is used. Uh, and God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. Again, when the Jews had victory over the enemy, this was indicated uh, by the terminology they had light, aura, O-R-A-H. And the same, same word or the root word is used in the illumination of the sun, moon, and stars um, and God's creation. And we are in a supermoon as of today. Um, where it's the brightest I think it's been since in 18 years, I believe. It's some, so many percentage brighter than normal. Uh, what else about this? Let's see. I, I mentioned in the study that fear, Purim is not to be feared by the believer. It's an ongoing time of joy and gladness as God's peace and truth goes out into all the world by the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, there, we are approaching May 21 very shortly now, and there's a lot of people who are maybe disappointed once we pass that date. But I want them to know that, you know, God's word is full of promises. And in Joel, when God removes the northern, which ends after the 8,400 days, which is Satan, who is Satan? God will be magnified. It is a time, in Joel 2, it is a time of his magnification, his the great work that he performs, which I believe is a short work of 153 days, where the Logos, the Word of God, goes out. Um, Jeremiah 33, 6, and I'll close with this. Uh, Behold, I will bring health and cure. I will cure them. I will reveal unto them the abundance of peace and truth. We're getting back to the letters of peace and truth uh, and why that relates to the, uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ. I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return, and I will build them as the first. God reverses things again. He, he, this is a constant theme in the Bible. I wrote about this in Countdown to the Last Day, that God's reversals are seen throughout His Word, and it's a great thing. He does allow the believers to go through this time of great tribulation where they are under pressure, they are oppressed, they... They endure infliction of other people, and Satan will use many means of that. Uh, gossip, uh, whispering about other people, and instead of focusing on their own sins, they'll look at somebody else's sins. And they, it's similar to what, what happened in Christ's day as the scribes and Pharisees, and what, what Christ called them was hypocrites, because they're not, they're not focusing on their own life, they're, they're looking to other people's lives. The light by day, neither for the brightness shall the moon give her light unto thee, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy, thy God thy glory. This is exciting because we have a time where we're entering from around October 21, 2011, when we know the timekeepers will be removed. That light is going to be replaced by the glory of Christ. The glory of Christ, when he comes, it'll be like lightning shining from east to west. There will be no mistaking it. It will be visible. The heavens will pass with a great noise. Uh, it will be very visible. I, you know, I, I cringe when I hear studies saying that it'll all be a silent coming and, and this and that. It's like, no, I mean, the heavens are going to pass away with a great noise. Uh, 2 Peter 3 declares that. So we have to deal with those verses 
And I think more people will deal with them, but it's going to take passing May 21, 2011 to look at those carefully. Um, in this earthly domain, this is what I close with in this study. In this earthly domain, I have oftentimes wondered if the signs of the sun and the moon and stars could not be greater illumination the closer we get to the last day. In other words, the more the light of the gospel goes forth, the more the natural lights will shine. How exciting is it that the light of God will be our illumination as the timekeepers are replaced? There is great hope for the believers. Um, we've, we've endured this time of tribulation, time of mocking, which is coming. But all in all, we're dealing with eternity. So this is a small drop in the bucket that we had to endure 23 years, 800 8,400 days. So that's the PRM study. Again, if you want to read these studies, I'm posting them uh, almost, well, sometimes every other day, sometimes every Sunday. Uh, I'm going to be posting and recording a lot more because there's just so much information to cover. This is the only way I know to do it, to put videos up, to put studies up. Anyway, www.2011studies.com count down to the last day. You can click on that and join the Yahoo groups. Uh, this is Marty Catuzzo. Thank you very much for listening. And if you have any um, correspondence you want to get to me, my email is 2011studies at gmail.com 2011studies at gmail.com Thank you. Have a good day.